Welcome to day 8 of the 2023 Advent of Code. So, we're continuing with the uh, camel theme. So, we're riding a camel across desert island when we spot a sandstorm. And so, something about ghosts, something about maps. Okay, so we have a map. And we're supposed to use left to right instructions to navigate through the network. So, this is a graph theory problem, except, as you'll see, there isn't really too much to the graph theory side. There's no pathfinding. After examining the maps for a bit, we find two nodes that stick out, three A's and three Z's. We feel like we're currently at three A's and we have to go to three Z's using the left-right instructions. So here is how the map looks. The first line is going to be the steps. So in this case, it's right and then left. And then this is the network. So we see that when we are at three A's, if we go left, we'll be at three B's. And if we go right, we'll be at three C's. And so in this case, it says go right, so we go to three Cs. At three Cs, the left path goes to Z and the right path goes to G. And we're supposed to take a left here, so we go to three Zs. And so it takes two steps. It might not always be like this. In this case, we first go left to B, left to A, right to B, left to A, left to B, and then right to Z. So it's six steps here. And so these will just repeat indefinitely as long as we need. So given this, starting at A, how many steps do we need to reach Z? So let's first start by um, grabbing in all of the input. And we'll split it on double backslash N. And we can say steps and then rest equals that. And so what this gives us is that steps is going to be the first line. We split on two new lines and then everything else is going to be this block here. Alternatively, what you can do is you can do dot split lines here, and then we can just get rid of the empty one here, and this syntax will make it so that the remainder is rest, so steps will be assigned to the first line, this will be assigned to the second line, and then rest will be assigned to the remaining lines as an array. Actually, I think I like this better, so let's stick with this. So this is what we get now. Steps is going to be the first line, and rest is going to be an array of the remaining lines. So now let's make our lookup table to store the network. So it's going to be a, a map that points from each node to its left and right node. So for each line in rest, the current position, so position, and then let's call it mm, targets is going to be line.split on the equal sign. So that's what we get. And now we can take targets and then slice off the first and last elements to get rid of the brackets. And then we can split it on the comma space and that will give us the left and right value. So now we can just say network at position equals this. And now we have our network as a map. So now it's just implementation details. We can just implement this directly. So uh, let's take a step count equals zero. And then our current position is three A's. And while the current position is not three Z's, we will increase our step count by one. And then we will figure out where we're supposed to go. So if the current step is left, then we want to go to network. And then we use network at current to look up the targets, which will be an array of length one, sorry, of length two. And then we give it index zero to take the left path. Otherwise, we do the same, but with one. And if you want to simplify this a bit, you can do like this. And if you want to simplify it a bit more, although this gets a bit confusing, you can do r instead and flip the condition like this. And then since true is considered one in Python and false is considered zero for basically all intents and purposes, you can actually just do this. However, this is a bit weird because you shouldn't be using a Boolean value as an index. So I would recommend this as the simplest you get. And the last thing you need to do is shift or rotate the steps. So after we're done with the current step, we'll move it to the end of the step string because we might need it later. 
And so we can just do steps is all but the first element plus the first element itself because it's a string. So these will both be strings. And when we add them together, we still get a string. So now let's see what we get. And this gives us the answer for part one. Now let's take a look at part two. So the map isn't for people, it's actually for ghosts. And so we notice something curious. The number of nodes with names ending with A is exactly equal to the number of nodes ending with Z. And so if we were a ghost, we'd probably just start at every node that starts with A and follow all of them simultaneously until they all end at Z. And so in this example, we have two nodes starting ending with A, and then we have two nodes ending with Z. And so we begin at 11A and uh, 22A together. We go left to 11B and 22B together. And then, et cetera, you can read through this. Eventually, after six steps, we end on 11Z and 22Z together. And so simultaneously, we start at every node that ends with A. And we want to see how many steps it takes until we reach nodes that only end with Z. And so intuitively, you might think you can just simulate this again directly. But um, long story short, it will take you too long. So I can't exactly explain how to judge this. In fact, I didn't even judge it. I just tried simulating it and it took too long. So I just gave up and tried a different approach. So let's copy the new test case here. So we're going to change this up a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to, instead of simulating all of them concurrently, we're going to simulate them separately. Now this doesn't directly tell us when all of them will simultaneously be on Z, but I'll show you how to combine those together at the end. So let's do it this way. So the keys that we are going to start at, so um, let's call it positions, is going to be each uh, key of the network. So this iterates through the keys, which are all of the valid positions. And then we want to keep it if it ends with an A. And so this is what we get. There are only six positions, but the combination of trying to wait for all of them to end at Z will take forever. So now we're going to, for each one, simulate basically the cycling. So let me show you on a whiteboard. So basically what we're looking for is the first ghost will start at something that starts with an A, and then it'll take some number of steps to get to something that ends with Z. And then after another amount of steps, it'll go to something that ends with Z, and then another amount of steps will go to something that ends with Z, and eventually it'll go back to the first Z that it found. And so this gives us a cycle. Another ghost might take a different amount of time to get to the first Z, And then it might also have a different length of its cycle. And so eventually we'll be able to combine these together. Now there might be a way to combine this general case together, but at the end, I'll show you that it's a bit more simple than this, but this is essentially the idea that we're going for. So what we're going to do is uh, for each position, Let's do for current in positions and then just modify it in place. We're going to keep an array of cycles and we're going to keep um, the array containing the actual cycle length of this current position in an array that we define within the loop. And then at the end, we'll just do cycles.append cycle. So now let's fill this out. So we're going to have much, uh, a lot of things that are similar. So first we're going to want to save the value of steps because we're modifying it. So let's call it um, current steps. And so we'll modify current steps instead of steps so that at the start of the next iteration, we get the same value here. And then we can say um, count equals zero. Let's call step count equals zero. And now we can do this uh, while true and you'll see why we're doing this later um and then we'll have another while loop inside so while the current position does not end with a z we'll try to find the next z so again we'll increase the step count by one and then we'll advance it so current equals 
network at current, and then we'll do the same trick. So zero if the current uh, current steps at index zero is equal to L, and one otherwise, and then we will modify the current steps value. Like so. And so once we've reached the Z, we have a couple of possible states. So either we've arrived at the first Z, we've arrived back at the first Z in a new cycle, or we've arrived at a different Z. So let's save a first Z value, which we will start out as none. And so here are the three cases. If first Z is none, then this is our first time encountering a Z. So we'll save it, first Z equals current. And then cycle dot append step count. And then step count is now equal to zero. So we can track not how long the total cycle is, but how long it takes us to get from the first Z to the next Z. Otherwise, if we're back at the first Z, then we can do cycle dot append step count. And then we can just break from this loop because we've already arrived back. So that would be, we've taken this path here. So once we take that, we can break out of this loop. Finally, if neither of these are the case, then we've arrived at some random Z in the middle here, like these, for example, we don't need to care about those. And uh, we can also just move this out here just to make things a bit simpler, like so. And so this is what we get for our cycle values. And sorry, I've made a bit of a mistake here. Um, I forgot that uh, this will immediately exit because the first time we find a Z, we'll have current dot ends with Z and then we don't modify it. So when we repeat the loop, of course, the condition is still true. So uh, we can also say uh, if step count is equal to zero, then we also want to start uh, do an iteration of the loop. So this will push us past staying on the same Z. So this is the important observation, and this is this cannot possibly be a coincidence, so it must be intended in the problem. The amount of time it takes us to get from our position to the first Z is the same as the amount of time it gets takes us to get from the first Z back to itself. And since the length of the cycles is two, that means that only this path and this path are taken. So there is no intermediate Z. And so for all of these cases, Essentially, all we're doing is we take X amount of time to get to Z, and then we take X amount of time to get to Z again. And so notably, this just means that any valid state must be a multiple of this X for each X. So for the uh, sample case here, what that means is that uh, the valid state must be a multiple of two and a multiple of three. And so this is the LCM operator. So we're just going to make the assumption that the output will always look like this. Um, please let me know if you find a case that doesn't satisfy this, but this cannot possibly be a coincidence. So let's just say uh, nums equals cycle zero for cycle in cycles. And now we just want to take the least common multiple of these. So the least common multiple of two numbers is, as the name suggests, the smallest number that is a multiple of both of them. So for example, if we have x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 15, then although 150 is a multiple of both of them, which you can get by multiplying, it isn't the smallest one. The smallest one is 30. And the way that you can most easily find this is by just taking their product and then dividing it by their greatest common divisor, which as the name suggests, is the largest number that divides both of them. In this case, that's five. So 150 divided by five is equal to 30. So that gives us our LCM. Now, be careful, this doesn't work across more numbers. So you can take the GCD of an array of numbers quite easily, but let's say we have X is equal to 10, Y is equal to 15, and Z is equal to 20. If we tried doing this 10 times 15 times 20 divided by their GCD, um, what's happening? Divided by their GCD, which is again five, we would get, uh, it's 30 times 20, so we get 600. But that clearly is not true because 60 would have worked on its own. So what we're instead going to do is we're just going to reduce the array pairwise. So in this case, we can first take the LCM of these two values, which is 30. And then we can take the LCM of these values, which would be 30 times 
20 divided by their GCD of 10, which is equal to 600 over 10, so just 60. And so essentially what we'll do is we'll say um, current, or let's pick a better name, LCM is equal to nums.pop. And then while the length of nums is greater than zero, we'll just say that LCM is equal to uh, nums, uh, we'll say next is equal to nums.pop again, or sorry, this is a bit stupid, for, uh, for num in nums, what we'll do is we'll set LCM to the LCM of itself and num. So this just reduces the array pairwise. And so we can just do LCM is equal to LCM times num divided by the GCD of the two. And you don't need to implement GCD yourself. You can just import it from the math package, which is part of the standard library. And finally, we can just print out the LCM. So yeah, this is what I meant by it's too large to run the iterations yourself. This is uh, millions, billions, yeah, 12 trillion operations, which is completely impossible. So yeah, hopefully this LCM thing is not a coincidence because that's the only way I can see that you could potentially solve this. In any case, I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.